I'm usually excited for, for days we film, and I usually also don't start the intro, so this is a little bit weird. But I'm, I'm sitting back here. There's six bottles over that way. There's six pours down here. Yes. It smells like a campfire, like a Band-Aid, <laughs> like just really unpleasant smells. No. And I, I know what these are. I don't know what they taste like. I've never had them. <laughs> I also don't know why you chose to do this video. I don't know if it's because I said that I was getting into American yes. single malts and you just wanted yes. to toss me in the deep end yes. with this well, stuff. For a few reasons. I, I What we're going to do today is I have Trent tasting my most expensive scotch in my collection. Now, I bought these a few years ago, honey. I bought them actually. I had, In the last couple of years, I haven't bought anything that was... Trent knows that. Smart. That's pricey, but... Before that, I did buy a few. So the only bummer about this video is that your mother is sitting right over there. So I've got to divulge different price ranges. But okay, but have I ever said anything to you? <laughs> no. Well, I mean that awesome. Kentucky Owl video. Okay, that was <laughs> that was stupidity. Is what that was. It's fine. It's a great <laughs> that wasn't pour. Like a splurge. That was just stupidity. Well, there you have it. <laughs> it was a splurge. It's fine. But it at any rate. Uh, it, it did ring a bell for me, you know, thinking of this video when you did mention in the American Single Malt Show that your, you know, your palate might be opening up to other varieties of whiskey, including single malt. So I thought, what better way to get kind of dipped into scotch? And we do have people that ask for scotch videos. Really? I don't know if you knew that. I did not. But, you know, there's not a lot, but there, there's some that messaged me and said, I wish we could get some now and then. Yeah. So I thought, what better way to get you into a little bit of scotch than, you know, try my... You know, my finest brown liquids. Okay. Yeah. So, because I don't know really much about single malts, if it's made in... Is the only difference between an American single malt and a single malt from... Or wait, then a scotch is the fact that it's made in Scotland? Correct. So there's nothing else? No. Okay. No. So... And I'm it, sure there's different ways of doing it. There's story, you know, I mean, when they're... When their barrels are in the warehouse and it's aging, you know, you've got a lot of that stuff in Scotland's right on the ocean. You mm -hmm. know, that's where the brininess comes into some of them. Mm, the brininess. Yeah. You know, there's there's those and there's a lot more peated varieties of Scotch whiskey than there is here in American are these, single malt. Are these all peated? Oh negative, no. Okay. No, and actually you you kind of threw out uh, you threw out the caveat of the list here. I was actually gonna go from the cheapest of my collection of, of my most expensive in, in order into the last one. However, you said, I am not tasting a peated scotch in the middle of that light up. If you're gonna do peated, put it at the end. Oh, duh, I should have known that these aren't all peated. <laughs> well, I've, I've had, I've unfortunately tasted a peated yeah. scotch before. Yeah. And I know that after I after I take a sip of it, it just kind of like blows my whole palate up. I and I don't, I, if I'm trying stuff that is yeah. at the top end of your sure. list from a price perspective, and also, it just judging off that label and age perspective, I don't want to ruin that with a campfire liquid. <laughs> that just doesn't seem like a, a good way I'm to go. So this is, you know, this is this is a chance for you to try these, and I don't think you've ever tasted any of them. No, absolutely, I, I didn't think so. The only other reason, Trenton, is that I thought on Friday we could actually do a Scotch blind. Another thing that <laughs> rang my bell was yours talking about patrons being able to choose blinds. Am I not right? Did you, did, is Carlos doing it? Carlos is not doing okay. it. I've had a scotch blind sitting on my desk from our patron Josh for a decent amount of time now. He actually sent us samples and sealed envelopes. So I don't even know what they are either. Okay. So we're going to do that on Friday too. So we got this today and we got Friday we're going to do a little bit of a scotch blind. And I think that would be good for you. I really do. So let's get done with the talk and let's get started. The very first bottle I have for you, I think you're going to like this one actually, Trent. This is Glenn Dronick. This is a Master Vintage 1993, a 25-year-old scotch for you there, buddy. So the only thing I know about this is that I, I got this for you. That's the only thing that I know. Harry had it. Yep. Yeah, which is, you know, pretty cool that he which, had it down there. Is it left? So, yeah, you're going to go from your left to your right. So this one here is what I would refer to as a sherry bomb trend. This one is aged exclusively in Pedro Jimenez and Oloroso sherry casks. It is 25 years old. We said that, and it is 96.4 proof. It smells like Smuckers. Does it? A little bit. It's a little, it's it's quite uh, jammy. Yes, it is. And I, and I remember... You know, because I've sipped a little bit of this. I remember it's it's one of those real rich and condensed 
sips. Are these all, are, are all of these um, like aged in used bourbon barrels? Uh, no, that one, I, actually this one right here, Trenton, is, is aged exclusively in sherry barrels. Oh, that's it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, Absolutely. so kind of right up my alley. Yeah, it, you know they can they could do that too. They can they can choose whatever barrels they want to age in. Okay, that's pretty nice. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's kind of like it's like a jammy and like an apricotty, but yeah. still, yeah. always I get a yeah, it's different. A coffee, like a, a roasted coffee bean type of thing. And that's a good question for the folks out there because, as you all know, we're not professionals by any stretch, nor are we either one of us the smartest one in this community, that's for sure. There is a definitive malt note that comes with Scotch whiskey, and it's different than American single malt whiskey, too. Why is that? Can you tell us in the comments? Yeah, you know, I'd be interested I, to know. Yeah. Sure. But two, do you do you uh, do you get? I get like a like a like a sweet barbecue sauce or something. It's vaguely like barbecuey, but it's not mm -hmm. smoky. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It's more. It's just like a barbecue esque yeah. type of flavor, yeah. and I like it. It's yeah. not. It's not off putting. No. I don't know. I can't remember how much I got this for. It's about three hundred bucks. Okay. It was about three hundred bucks. Maybe maybe a couple <clears throat> ticks less. And I've seen, so it's interesting. I, I do keep an eye out on like the unicorn auctions, the whiskey auctions, and like all that type of thing. There's uh, scotches and uh, scotches and stuff that go for like 150 grand. Without question, there's some of that stuff is extremely collectible. It just blows my mind, dude. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay a house for it. But I mean, no. I also don't know that I would, that I would personally buy this either. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, it's it's not it's not bad. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the next one, pal. If you want to move that one done, mm -hmm. down. This is the Balvenie Ton 1509. You want to that tune? Ton. Oh. It's the Balvenie Ton 1509 batch number four. Okay. Yeah. I'd have been, I've been calling it tune anytime I anytime I see it in the store or anything. Well, if I have to be honest about it, Trent, I have to. But in preparation for this show, it's actually pronounced ton. And ton is basically like a, a vat. So oh. a large vat. So what happens is, you know, in the blend, they put it all together and put it in a ton to marry. So if, I'm, if I want to go off my memory, and sometimes that isn't the best, but I think there was, in this particular uh, batch, there were 13 ex-bourbon barrels and 10 sherry butts. I looked that up already because I know you're going to ask me what's yeah, a sherry butt. I don't know what butt. that is. It's just a larger barrel of sherry. It's larger than a regular bourbon barrel. How big? I don't know. I don't have the the amount of liters okay. or anything else, but it's a big barrel. So there, if I'm not mistaken, there was 13 bourbon barrels and 10 dumped in sherry barrels, dumped in a ton and married there for a few months before it was bottled. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good. You've been we've been talking about butts, well, the sherry <laughs> kind at least. For a while, and I never yeah. knew what they were. I just, yeah. I would have, yeah. I always I, thought it was like the bung right. of a barrel. They just referenced it yeah. differently. Yeah, but, or, or or maybe like the top or the bottom. Yeah, just something. threw some in yeah. there. Yeah, not a, not a whole. Yeah, not a whole thing. I understand that. Now this was a little higher proof too, 103.4. Oh, I don't even know what this yeah. was. What was this? Yeah, this oh one, wow, and this one here was 500 bucks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It, Pretty close. It, it, it's it's, like it's, it's been a while. Vanilla. Is it? It's nice. It's yeah. like a rich, rich vanilla ice cream almost. Like yeah, the Briars. Sure. sure. Yeah, I get that. For sure. I'll say for for it being 103 proof. And I could be going about this all wrong. I I know nothing about Scotch, so uh, forgive me. But it it really doesn't have that much odor to it. Like it doesn't smell like a whole lot. I get it's it's kind of a one noter based on the smell. For for five hundred dollars, mm -hmm. I, I would have maybe expected it to come off a little bit more yeah. prominent with different yeah. profiles and stuff. But. This is a this is an extremely popular release. You know, as you as batch number four indicates, there's several batches that came out. It is um, a little bit higher proof, which helps as well. And let me think. this is interesting. I will say. It is. It is. And I, I want to read this to you here, too. Rich and malty with sweet vanilla fudge. So, 
There okay. you go. Layers of honeycomb and citrus. You know? I can maybe see like a honeycomb type of thing. Yeah. But it's yeah, not... It, it's... I don't know what to expect from these. I, I ex I'm, I'm like in my head, I'm expecting like a little bit of a bite at the end or something. But it, it's, it's really just, it's nice and viscous throughout. Yeah. And it, it ends on like a... Not on a yeah. high note, but it's not bad by any means. It's no. just like it's almost desserty. It's 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 more of a delicate pour. That's a yeah, that's a good way to put it. You know, it is. Yeah. It's more of a delicate pour. Those flavor notes are spot on as far as I'm concerned. Because there is a little bit of a citrus bite there. Definitely that vanilla fudgy yeah. vanilla that you were talking about. So yeah. I don't know, I keep sipping it, I like it. Def it's velvety, it's definitely a, a viscous, like you said, delicate, mm -hmm. but it's not uh this, this could also be ruining me to a degree, right? Because we started with American Single Malts, the Westward yeah. one in particular, and that's like 125 proof. Yeah. And also it was 125 bucks. So we're going from that to this, which is still 103 proof, a good proof point, but it's like four times as expensive. Right. I would be almost interested to know for the people that are really into these types of releases and scotches mm -hmm. and things, how these how these compare to like a right. Westward or like right. a Westland or a Strand sure. or anything like that. Sure, but, but it's extremely limited too. So if you think about yeah. it, thirteen bourbon barrels and ten sherry butts, that's that's the amount of this batch. Okay. And that's, that's it. what that's what was released. Is this so an annual thing? Thinking about that. I, I really don't know. Okay. I really don't know. All right, buddy, let's move on. I got uh Brucalotti, Black Art. This 1994 edition 7.1. Okay, is that is that is the uh, Breckenridge Dark Art? Is that aged in these barrels? Does it have anything to do? No, with? Okay. it has nothing okay. to do with it. They just say that concerning their dark malts. Okay, I gotcha. Right. Oh, that's I didn't even think about that. That's kind of cool. Yeah, that's what they're going off of. This one here, Trenton, is it's also about 500 bucks. It's okay. 96. Point Eight proof, right? And it's, but they're very, um, it's very unknown. A lot of the details on this here. It is, I think, 25 years old, if I'm not mistaken. So we do know that. However, yeah, 25 years old. However, they don't disclose the maturation process. Okay. So they don't know what barrels were used. It's just, it just states it was aged in an undisclosed variety of barrels okay well and i do i i am not super familiar with brucolati is that how you say it brucolati, brucolati. Mm -hmm. i have their um what's that what the, Ooh, the that blue one good. it's like a it's like a weeded or yeah, something yeah it's yeah, like, yeah that that light blue one's like a barley type classic laddie classic laddie. yeah that yeah. that that is a brucolati yeah. product i'm familiar with yeah. but that's it's also got, like it's got a lot of bucks. barley notes in yeah it's really nice, really nice. This smells more like a like grassy, like musty. I love this. It does smell a little old. I will get you that. It, it does give you that basement vibes. Yeah. And old library vibes and things like that. Um, it, my basement. It, it's not like flooding, but you know we have a leak in some of the cinder blocks on the side. Do and you? when I go, yeah, oh. it's in that back uh, tool room. Oh, okay. Uh, it's on the corner where the gutter oh. comes down. I just got to yeah. clean the gutter out because it's seeping through when the water builds up. But. Um, it smells exactly like this when I walk into that room. It's like wet <laughs> concrete. You're gonna have to. You have to go with me, and I go. You know, do, I don't, do your best here, but I'm getting some really light, nice light fruits in there too, like pear, a little bit of apple, things like that. I'm, 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 on, I'm on the struggle bus with that one. <laughs> I like. Okay. It. Yeah. Now that you say that, I can get a little green apple. Yeah. Sure. I don't know about like a pear. I struggle with pear though too. It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't make sense to me as a fruit. Yeah, I'm getting some lighter fruit notes in there for sure. I, I think it's fantastic. Pears are also pretty bad. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, Go ahead. I think this is my least favorite so far. Really? Huh. Yeah. Interesting. It's more it's more it's darker. It's I don't get any of the the for the green apple on the on the palate like you, you initially said. Mm -hmm. It also doesn't taste musty. It doesn't taste like wet concrete or anything on the palate. It's different. It's more yeah. earthy. It's it, more grain okay. forward. It is definitely a little bit earthy, a little bit grain forward. I'm still getting those fruit notes. Yeah. Yeah. But I understand where you're coming from. And I also understand especially why you like this one a little bit more and probably this one. So I get that. 
When so two, far, I've liked them all. And two, you got to think, though, like even with lower proof bourbons, mm -hmm. I still struggle to pick up flavors, like dominant flavors from those. Okay. Even when some somebody might be able to, especially somebody that's more experienced than I am or doesn't delve into yeah. stuff that's higher proof, maybe higher than 100, mm -hmm. they're able to pick up flavors from something around this proof, yeah. which is 96, mm -hmm. almost 97. A little bit a little bit better than me right. so I, I can pick up some stuff but it's not wow I really get this vibrant note it's more right. like oh you got to search for it yeah it's, it's in the background quite a bit well speaking of lower proof we're gonna get even a little bit lower okay okay but I, I love this bottle I really do Glen Morangy Trenton Grand Vintage Malt 1991 well, look I at came that. out of that box the, I mean look at that isn't the, that a beauty I will say when I when I see proof. when I see stuff go up for auction that is really old, right. 60, 70 year that they maybe make 50 bottles of mm -hmm. the packaging. Even though they're going on auction for 50 grand sure. or something like sure. that, the packaging is just insane. Yeah. I saw this one where it was like this hand. It was like a skeleton hand or something. It was holding <laughs> this thing, and they they blew the glass around yes. the hand. Why don't so you show your mom that box that came in so she knows? So this, this is this really just solidifies yeah, the price. Yeah, then there's all kinds of nice it etching on the right the in here. Wow. Look at that! It's velvet interior. Isn't that something? This is like the Rolls Royce of interior <laughs> boxes. <laughs> yes, it is. Thank you for saying that, Trenton. I mean, you can't you can't live in it, but you could probably put your pet hamster in it or something. They'd like it. Absolutely could. There's many things you could do. <laughs> this bottle here, Trenton, was seven hundred bucks. Now, if you look online now, if you look online now, which I did, of course, all these bottles are a little bit more than this on the secondary market. It, I got a cheap, I, I, I got a good deal, honey, because they're more now. They've, I, you know, they've grown in, in okay. price, so when I did purchase it, you know, I did You got it. a good deal compared to today, I to did. today's market. Yeah, it's 26 I year. It's a 26 year old. That's 26 year old single mom. But you know, I always feel guilty spending any money, and after <clears throat> this video, I don't oh, no. think I'm going to feel that way any longer. What? I always feel guilty that. if I spend any money. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, treat yourself. I didn't know that. Yeah. Kurt seems to treat himself quite well. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and I mean, too, this is Not almost, for... this is about as old as I am, which is, which is yeah, kind of wild. Close, yeah. But it smells, yeah. It, this smells the best out of any of them. This is the fourth release in their Bond House collection, Trenton. That's really what it is. And it's what's really crazy about this is this was aged for quite a long period of time and exclusively ex-bourbon. Then they removed it and they spent more than a decade, oh, right? More than a decade in some ex-sherry barrels and ex-burgundy wine barrels. And there was a limited amount, very little amount, that were actually put into new toasted barrels is this one of those that was a toasted barrel or did i just come no, no all that was in the blend oh okay so when they took it out of the ex bourbon oh. they put whatever amounts into the into the sherry into the ex burgundy wine and a little bit a little bit they said into a new toasted oak barrel yeah. So there's somebody in our in our discord who com who posted a picture of the markers oh, so that good. smell that you might give to a kindergarten class. Mm -hmm. They smell like blueberry and strawberry and stuff. The, a bee wall. This this smells like one of those. It's it's almost chalky. Absolutely not. I, I cannot. I absolutely cannot disagree with you more. <laughs> Are you sure? I'm getting. I'm, I'm getting. The supporting cast here is a little bit of a malt note, but I'm getting a, just a lovely supporting cast. Wow. I'm getting a lovely black cherry note out of this. I mean, just lovely. Really it's, it's fine. It's a little malty, a little black cherry. It's a nice nose. I mean, I'm not mad about it. it smells like chalk, like uh, chalk and uh, yeah. those smell, smell. What do they call this? The smelly markers? Smarkers? This no, is, that's a stupid This has nothing to do with marker. No way. Kind of smells like those markers. No, no. <laughs> What's the proof? 86 proof. Hmm. Why are they so low proof? Is that just not similar to how Japanese stuff is usually a lower proof? They don't delve much above, I feel like even ninety. A lot of the, a lot yeah. of the Japanese stuff that I've seen is right. eighty or eighty-six around that range. Yeah, a lot of the Scotch, especially the blended Scotch, is 80, 86 proof somewhere in there. Uh, a lot of your better single malts that are coming out right now that are non-chill filtered, no color, 
they're in that 92 proof range, which is really Is that all these, the non-show filtered? Not powder? all of them, no. Okay. Not all of them. That's the perfect proof range for me, Trent. It really, really is. Uh, the 92 proof. But there's a couple that we got to taste that, you know, a little bit higher. You already tasted the, you know, the Balvenie. It was a little bit higher. But I just think that's divine. I really do. I, I think it's wonderful. I'll say none of these so far have been, none of them have been bad. Honestly, at this point, I would just rather drink this, which is perfect for my wallet because it's already suffering to begin with. <laughs> and I understand that, though. I'm not asking anybody to go out and buy these. I just wanted Trent to try them. We're just having some fun with it. And I understand. I, I understand. I already knew going into this that this would probably be your favorite. So Really? Yeah. Well, I mean, really. It's because it's rich and condensed and, and it's a sherry pop. Any Anytime that I can add something sherry finished or something that really leans towards a, a chocolatey type of note with a little mm -hmm. bit of coffee, a little yeah. bit of bitterness, yeah. this delivers on pretty much everything yeah. that I like. Yep. And it's it's fantastic. Yeah, if, if I were looking for a splurge for myself, I would absolutely try and find one of these. I know they have a couple more that are older vintages. Well, do yourself a favor and find the Glendronic 18 year. You'll like it. Is that an annual allocated thing? No. You should find it somewhere. Okay. I'm this is lovely. I get tomorrow. the black cherry note. I, I honest to God get a little of that hint of a toasty note in there too. There's there's just a lot going on and I like it all. Okay, we're ready to get into this peated action. And that's all for today's video, guys. <laughs> it was a good time. And hey, he's the one that said add it. I had five picked. I said we can skip this one. You know, but he said, no, put it in there. But I've got Lafroy 25 year here. This is aged exclusively, Trent, in X bourbon barrels, okay? I don't remember the proof point on this. I have to look. 104 proof. So this is gonna this is gonna wow. tune you up just a little bit. And it's and it's straight up 25 year single malt scotch whiskey. Why is it fabulous so stuff? Light. And I, I do believe it was around four hundred bucks. Is this a light? Pretty sure. It's would, okay, listen. It's aged exclusively in X bourbon barrels, right? So these here have sherry notes in them and stuff like that too. So you're gonna have colorations there, you know, from the sherry barrels and stuff like that. This is just it's usually around a straw color like that. Okay. Pale yellow. Well, I don't know if you just noticed, and I mean I don't want you to get mad at me. Did you ever burp and it smells like a latex balloon? I can't. I can't say that I have. No. That's just. That's have you, honey? I don't believe so. That's, yeah, a, that's what just happened. Good. I've got. I've seen more comments about me going to the doctor for acid reflux. <laughs> you should, and you should. Michelle told me that I, the other day. I missed it, and thank God I did, because usually I'm, I'm right here and I feel it. Usually. Man, this just smells like hot dog water. It does not. Are you out of your mind? No. Have, does mom still do the thing where she takes a, a oh. two prong? utensil and s stabs it with a fork and then burns it beyond belief over the stove and puts mustard on it. <laughs> Remember you used to do that, honey? I still do once in a while. Do you once in a while? Yeah. It smells like that. No way, bro. There, there's a little bit of citrus in here. There's some citrus How on peel. Earth? Absolutely. No, no, no. 100%. I'm telling you. If it was torched. Where's, where's Robert sheared when I need him? That's all I can say. Because you're, <laughs> you're dead wrong. I bet there, with some of these There's up a here, little campfire note in there, but it's subdued. A little. This is actually, to me... A delicate nose for a peated whiskey. Well, thank you for not bringing Octomore up here. And... It's refined, in my opinion. There's some light citrus Wilson. notes. There's a, it's great. That's fantastic. No, dude. Mm. No. Mm -hmm. Nope. No. Man, that's good, bro. It's like if you if you burned a band aid. <laughs> There's something to that because you were just like, ooh, yeah, maybe. Well, Lafroig is famous on, on aromas for that Band-Aid, you know, the Band-Aid note. So, and you said it, so I was like, well, brother, whatever. I mean, I mean really. It's, mm. it's, I'm going to be, I'm going to be smelling my own breath for, <laughs> for the remainder of the evening, for sure. No, you won't. It's not, it's not. <laughs> Horrible, but I just, I don't see the appeal for peated stuff. That's okay. You know, not everybody likes it. I mean, very actually, probably a smaller percentage really enjoy a good peated scotch or peated anything for that matter. Does Lefroy only make peated stuff? From what I, from my understanding, yes. Okay. Cheapers, but took my tins over. 
That's cool. But to my understanding, yes. All right, buddy, you ready for this last one? I don't know. And I, and I kept it last because you got it for me. I You so were looking for it for a while. I was. This is the Ardbeg Dark Cove. Now... I'd never tasted this in a bar or a restaurant or anything like that. I just heard so many folks who truly love uh, a good peated whiskey, and in particular, Ardbeg talks so highly about Dark Cove. So I talked about it a lot. You know, Trent, he gets his mind, and, and eventually he'll find something somewhere. So I put this out there. It's 110 proof, too, by the way. Oh. I put this out here because I really don't even know what the price was, and I probably don't even want to ask. Because I did look online, and it's very few available. And secondary online for the very few that I found were about fifteen hundred bucks. So I hope what? you had to spend that. No, I, I traded it. I traded my own Martili for it. You are you have got to be kidding. Nope. Right. I mean, I swear. There were there you was You have <clears throat> got to be kidding me. Nope. You traded an Elmer T. Lee. I usually just I I, I wait that patient. Is a super win. I wait I wait patient <laughs> in the grass like a like a <laughs> cheetah stalking a gazelle or something. Then I just I'll just pounce on it afterwards. There was a gentleman wow. who had contacted me and his dad had recently passed away. Yeah. And he said there are you know X amount of bottles available. Wow. Most of them are scotches. He said I don't. He's like I know that you probably won't want any of them, but I was thinking about your dad if there's something that you want. Wow. Um, and he's like I'm I'm sort of into bourbon, not a whole lot. So if there's anything, maybe we could do a trade or do a cash or partial cash, partial trade, that kind of thing. And I was like, you know, well, what are the some things that you've been looking for? And he, he sent me a list and I was like, I actually have an Elmer T. Lee. Um, and I offered it to him. I, I looked on Unicorn Auctions. These, I don't know where you're seeing. I know like Fruit Bat and Reserve. Google. Oh, okay. That's your fruit. Yeah. Google. The, that's it. These I've seen on Unicorn Auctions for roughly three to 400. So at the time when I traded about a year, year and a half ago. Okay. Um, Elmer T. Lee and that were like basically a one-to-one. -one. Okay. Uh, Elmer T. Lee has fallen quite a bit since then. Yeah, but, but still, that, that's a fabulous I, I was really excited. Elmer, I am Elmer too. T. Lee's a fine now, core. I'd rather more have... excited. Yeah, yeah. Wow, holy cow, dude. Great job. I'll say, this doesn't this doesn't smell as harsh of no, a peat. No, it's wonderful. Okay. Wonderful. I might throw you for a loop here. I know, when you, I know you love when I do this. Are these, are, is there any information on the, on the what is it, PPM? Parts per, parts per million, parts per million, mm -hmm. or whatever for this is yeah. this is Lafroig usually more than this. That's why I'm not getting as much peat on the Ardbeg. Um, I, I'm gonna have to go by memory. I think Ardbeg is actually a little bit more than Lafroig, but I'll have to look okay. it up. But what you what you got there, Trent? You got a, got a big influence of sherry here again, and, and listed in what I looked up, they call it dark or black sherry. Now, why that is, oh. I don't know. I don't know sherry either. So if somebody's out there that knows sherry very well, what is a dark or black? sherry but that's the barrel that was used and also ex bourbon so you're going to get that sherry influence this is also 110 proof 2016 committee release this was 2016 okay and how you got the higher proof i don't know either that's a stroke of luck too because you, there's not very many higher proof bottles in the committee releases Mo most of them you'll find and, and any any of the other committee releases that i have in my collection are all the lower proof in the 92 range well, it was, there was a, a lower proof dark cove, and there was a yes, higher proof. Yes. And I was like, I think it's the higher proof. That's standard with these committee releases. Yeah. So I'm, you just, you struck it rich on all levels with this one, as far as I'm concerned. It's lovely. I don't know why. I'm not no. Oh, stop. No, because you said lemonade in a video a couple <laughs> days ago. Yeah, I'm, I don't know why I'm kind of getting a lemonade. I don't see that. I'm getting I'm getting more jam, jammy notes, mm. and with a little bit of with a little bit of campfire, with a little bit of barbecue, but predominantly jammy notes. Yeah, still absolutely not, but not the as harsh. The bottle might be turned a little. Like from here, it looks like. It oh yeah, uh, I don't know. This bottle's confusing. Yeah, just that one. It is confusing. This is absolutely to die for. This is an amazing art bag. It truly is. I, I, I'd like to do a side by side with the Oogadol just to see because that's my favorite um, shelf release for our okay. bag. And that's about a $100 bottle probably by now. Um, but I think it's just wonderful. It's the, they get the barbecue note, the little bacon note that's in there. You get the. You get the jammy with it too, and it's like a perfect marriage there. That's that's the thing. It's like it's like so well 
incorporated together. This is something, remember I tell you, this is something that I, I love a whiskey that I could sit down with if I pour one ounce and I could take an hour to drink it, yeah. to sip it, yeah. and check it out. This is this is it. Yeah, still, it, it I prefer that more over the Ardbeg for sure. I don't like to drink bacon or stuff that tastes like bacon. I'll leave that to, so to him, you know, it's fine. Wonder. But I get a Concord grape. I don't, I don't even that. know what that tastes like. It's a real deep, dark purple grape. That last Is that a seed in it? <laughs> I, I bought some grapes a while back and I didn't know they had seeds in it. So I went like, I just went full scent and I bit down real hard on one. And I bit down on a seed and nearly broke my tooth. I, don't, I doubt you even ever had an actual real Concord grape. I, is that like Welch's grape juice? Do they use those? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Well, like at a winery stuff, you have that real... Remember, honey, where were we at when I picked a couple off some vines? And then it was just so rich and delicious. It was dark and different than any grape you'll find at a grocery store. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean, this was uh, decent, I guess. Um, I, I honestly think still maybe at some point peated's will, will be up my alley i i never thought i would say that i do enjoy a single malt that just mm -hmm. kind of blows my mind but mm -hmm. palettes do change stuff mm -hmm. that i tried two three years ago i'm not afraid to admit i was wrong some of these are actually very good oh good good still i'm i'm glad and also sort of surprised that this is my favorite um i would drink this any day of the week it's yeah. it's very good i'm gonna try and you said the 18 yeah okay i'm, I'm gonna keep an eye out for that but if, if you are somebody, and I'm, I'm curious, maybe we could start a conversation in the comments. If you are somebody who really likes a good scotch, a, a, a non-peated scotch, I'd be interested to see how this compares to the American single malts that are cropping up from Stranahan, Westland, sure. you know, Cedar Ridge, yeah. Westward, all those types. Yep. Because I don't know if that's comparing apples to apples or if that's just completely different because the climate in Scotland is way different than it is in the U.S., or how any of that stuff works. I'm, I'm fully ignorant on that. I don't mind admitting it. Um, because even though I just tried all these and they're they're quite expensive and, and limited releases, high age statements, apart from this one, I'd rather I'd rather pull <laughs> off a Westward. Uh, I'd rather pull off a, a Westland or the Stranahan's that we just did a store pick of. Yeah. I mean, well, really, I think right. they're, they're I great. I get it. But it's, it's difference in, in palate and everything, that's, and that's fine. That's Maybe good. I'll dip my toe again into like... Stuff like this, see if I can yeah. pick up some more flavors in a, right. in a lower proof scotch at some well, point. Well, I, I am proud of you for, for sticking to it, going through it. And, and whatever you do, don't miss Friday's video because we will be blinding some form of scotch. I don't know what it is. I don't even have a clue. It was supplied to us by our good friend and patron, Josh. So can't wait for that. I hope they're not all peated. That's, but anyways, thank I you, Josh. I have no idea. I'm That's going to be great. I'm kind of looking forward to it. <laughs> I can only taste barbecue, so I'm going to run over to Taco Bell on my way home and get a, a beefy five, a beefy that, two layer. That would ruin sombrero. this whole tasting if you go get crappy Taco Bell. Listen, like, if come you on, talk to anybody in the Discord, seriously. the best way to end the night is in a Taco Bell drive thru oh, 100%. Oof. I don't know about that. It's maybe not so great the next day, but it's, it's good in the moment. Well, uh, I'm going to end with that. That's about all. I, I can't take no more of that. <laughs> All right, everybody. Hope you're having a great week. As always, we ask you to please drink responsibly. We'll see you next time. Right down here with Trent and I, digging into a scotch blind. Yeah? All right. See you later.